Hey everyone, I hope y'all are having a great day, and today I'll be talking about Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. I read this book about a week ago when I should have been studying for my AP exam, but chose to read this instead. But you know what? No regrets, because I really, really, really loved this book so much, and like I said, it's been a week since I read it, and since then I have thought about this book every single day. Will there be a day that I don't think about Since You've Been Gone? I don't know. I don't know, because it's fantastic. I love it. Right when I finished it, I wanted to go back to page one to reread it. If Morgan Matson sounds familiar to you, it might be because she's written Amy and Roger's Epic Detour, as well as Second Chance Summer. And both of these books are really fantastic. But I think that Morgan's novels get better with each publication. So Amy and Roger's is really good. Second Chance Summer is even better. And Since You've Been Gone blows both of its predecessors out of the water. I love this book. It is phenomenal. I can't stop talking about it either. Like, to my friends, I will mention this book all the time. For those who don't know, Since You've Been Gone is about two best friends named Emily and Sloane. And Sloane is that girl who just draws attention to herself even if it's not wanted. It's just the way that she lightens up a room. It's the way she walks. It's the way she dresses. People just look at her. And then there's Emily, who kind of stands in the shadow of Sloane, but she's okay with that. That's exactly where she wants to be, because she doesn't want the attention. That would make her really uncomfortable. So they have that really nice friendship going on, and then one day Sloane just disappears. And all Emily has is a list of 13 things to do that Sloane has sent her. Emily thinks that if she does all the tasks on this list, it will somehow, some way, lead her to Sloane. So as Emily tries to finish all of these tasks that Sloane has told her to do, she finds herself making new friends and going out of her comfort zone, and this list shapes her summer into one that she will never forget, as well as molds herself into a brighter and bolder character. I really, really love Morgan Matson, so I was super, super pumped for this book. So, I just flew through this. If I could say one thing about Since You've Been Gone, it would be that it made my heart happy. Like, if my heart could be represented by an emoji, it would be that blushing one with, like, the closed eyes, the one that's really adorable, it would be that one. Because that was literally how I felt throughout reading this book. It made me feel so good. It's just a really heartwarming story. And before I get into the book's content, let me just tell you a few things about, like, the physical book, because it is so freaking cool. When you take off the dust jacket, you're like, oh, it's just black, it's boring, and it has that spine. But then you look at the dust jacket, and you open it up, and there's another picture! Isn't that the... I... oh, oh, that's so cool! It is the coolest thing! I love it! Just take a long, glorious look at that, because it's pretty neat. I just, I love everything about this dust jacket. It is awesome. Okay, so let's talk about the actual book, like what's written on the pages. Emily was a really great character. I instantly connected with her. She's really awkward and not very social, and it's really, really believably done. Like, it's not annoying or obnoxious or anything. It was really realistic. I thought it's in the way that Emily never prolongs or extends conversation, even if that would be the more acceptable thing to do. Or it's in the way she gets really uncomfortable when she sees someone she knows in public, and I'm like, that is me. I am Emily. So I loved Emily right away, and I really, really loved reading about her journey and how she came to terms with herself as well as her growth as a character from the beginning to the end. Like I said, as she finds herself crossing off the tasks on this list, she meets new people and she has this new group of friends, including Dawn, the girl who works at the pizzeria, uh, Frank Porter, who is the perfect salutatorian class president guy from her high school, and as well as Collins, who is Frank's best friend, who's just kind of like a general goofball. And I loved that cast of characters so much. They were all really fun, and they each brought their own flavor to the story. Frank Porter is our love interest, and oh my goodness, he is just so sweet. He is so charming, he's really adorable, and he's kind of nerdy, and I love it. I say he's the love interest, but the romance in this book is really, really gradual and slow building, and it doesn't turn into a romance until maybe like three quarters in. I love the way they just built their relationship on a friendship and how they just got along really well, and how Frank kind of opened 
Emily up because like I said before, Emily isn't really one to make small talk if it's not necessary. So seeing their friendship grow first and then eventually develop into a romantic relationship was really, really adorable. So yeah, the romance was completely on point. I loved it. Morgan Manson's romances are always on point though, let's be real. One thing I really, really loved about this book was the plot because the plot is driven by the list of things to do that Sloane has given Emily and they never turn out how you expect them to. Like, you might think it's going to go one certain way and it'll end up completely evolving on its own. The task will be completed, but in a way that you won't expect in the beginning. The dust jacket has the list of things here so that you can constantly refer back to it. Some things are really simple and you would think that Emily would just get them over with, like in a shortcut way, like number nine is dance until dawn. So you might think that she would just, you know, blast her iPod and dance the night away in her room, but that's not how it ends up. Number three is steal something, and uh, Emily has a plan of what to steal, and then that plan ends up not going as planned, and so what she ends up stealing isn't something that you would have expected. And that's what I really, really liked about this plot because it was really surprising all the time and it never ended up like you predicted. The only thing that I found really predictable was why Sloane had left and why Sloane had given her this list. But even that was fine. I thought the romance gave me Anna and the French Kiss flashbacks because like the romantic storylines did kind of overlap a little bit. So I guess that was a little bit predictable too, but I still loved it. I loved all the quirks that Morgan Matson put into this book, like little details that made this book seem so much more fun. Like in Amy and Roger's Epic Detour, Morgan Matson includes a couple of playlists and diner receipts and postcards within the pages, and those made the story so much more fun. And in this book, again, there are playlists because Emily and Frank run together, so they have like playlists when they are running. Yeah, this playlist added like a new element to the story, which was really cool and really fun. The little quirks in the plot were really cute too, like living room theater was really awesome, and if you haven't read this book, you don't know what that is, so you should read this book. I'm gonna go into a really, really quick spoiler section, and if you don't want to be spoiled, I will leave like a, an annotation so that you can skip ahead, so, you know, click that, click it, click, okay, bye. Can we just talk about Gideon for a second? Because my heart hurt so much for Gideon. Oh my goodness, can I have him? I love how he was so reluctant to open up to Emily, but then he eventually did when he drew the cherries, and it's like, Emily, we're not sad, it's okay. Oh, that was so cute, it was the cutest thing. And then um, when Emily's like a little bit tipsy at the orchard, like he lifts his hand to run his hand through his hair, and his sleeve slides up, and she sees, she sees the glimpse of the Sharpie tattoo, and how he's filled in the waves and the bear and the Emily XOXO constantly since two months ago when she ended it with him. That was so sad. That was so sad. I didn't know if that was creepy or cute, but it was so sad. I felt so bad for him. I really, really want a spin-off of Gideon because I love him and he deserves love. Like, the one thing that really pissed me off in this book was that Frank wouldn't break up with his girlfriend. Like, Frank, what are you doing? There's so much chemistry between Emily and Frank and he just continued on dating Lisa. What is with you? Break up with her! It was like in Anna and the French Kiss where um, Etienne and Anna have such great chemistry and they're like practically together but of course Etienne still has Ellie and it's like Etienne what are you doing? Break the heck up with her. You don't want her anymore. Same thing with Frank. Frank took so freaking long to break up with her. After Emily and Frank kissed, Frank and Dawn and Collins all just like shut Emily out and she was completely cut off from all her new friends that she had made over the summer and she was so lonely and it was just so so sad. That was seriously the saddest part in the book, and that part made my heart sad. Like, if my heart was represented by an emoji, it would be the one that's just crying. I thought finding Sloane through the postcard and, like, the moon and the palm tree, that was pretty convenient, but I liked it nonetheless. Also, another Anna and the French Kids flashback was when Frank had left for New Jersey, and Emily was like, of course, he went back. Lisa. Just like after Anna and Etienne kissed at the park, Etienne had left and run away, and Anna was like, of course, he went back to Ellie. Always goes back to Ellie. It was the same thing. And in both scenarios, they both ended up breaking up with their girlfriend. 
far too belatedly, but they did it nonetheless. So yeah, again, like I said, Anna and the French Kiss romantic storyline, as well as Since You've Been Gone, Since You've Been Gone's romantic storyline, definitely did overlap several times. But I didn't mind it. I guess I just it was a little bit predictable. Okay, so yeah, Since You've Been Gone was such a fantastic book. I loved it. If you like contemporaries, definitely, definitely pick this up. I would definitely recommend this to fans of Sarah Dessen because Morgan Matson's stories definitely remind me of Sarah Dessen, except I like Morgan Matson's better, even though I love Sarah. I say that because they always have more serious themes and a really great cast of characters, and it focuses more on self-discovery or character development within oneself than the romantic aspect of the book. So if you like Sarah Dessen, definitely, definitely check this out. How many times have I said definitely in the past 20 seconds? This book is the bomb, and it makes me want to write to-do lists to give to my friends and have them write some for me too, because the adventure and the journey that Emily goes on is so fantastic, and it'll make you smile. Probably. I don't think I have anything left to say except read this book if you haven't read it, and if you have read it, definitely tell me how much you loved it, because you probably loved it, right? 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 Right. I want Morgan Matson to write my life. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and happy reading. Goodbye! I think I want to marry this book.